Hello guys, welcome back to the shop. So I'm currently waiting for some parts for the new project and I decided to record a little educational video for you. This may not be a video for everyone, but for some people like you, this video may be quite useful, let's say. So we're gonna look at some ways to splice or uh, join or connect a uh, broken cable. Or if you just need to connect two cables together and obviously you're not going to join them like this you're going to need to strip down the insulation so the most simple way to do this is to use a knife this one is my favorite type of knife i think everyone should have a knife like this with a break off blades they break off quite easily like this and it's kind of really easy to strip a cable with a knife like this it takes some practice to get it right but once you've done it a few times it's going to be quite easy to strip down a insulation. You gotta be careful with this method because it's quite easy to slice your thumb and it's quite easy to damage the core of the cable. You just gotta have the feel for it. I've been stripping cables like this for about 15 years and I have sliced my thumb so many times with this. This is definitely not the safest way to strip down the cable and a better option would be to use a handy stripping tool like this one. Boom. Boom. Done nice and fast sometimes the pliers have like a little groove to strip down the cable or you could use a stripping tool like this but to be completely honest with you i almost never use this for me it's mostly just a knife unless i have to strip like a dozen cables then i would probably use this one so you strip both ends of the cable and then there are many paths you can go by. So the most simple and old school one is an electrical tape. This one, gotcha. This one, you've seen it in your dad's toolbox so many times. I don't have to tell you about it. So what you may want to do next is if you use electrical tape, maybe strip a little more insulation of a cable, something like this, uh, rather than something like this, but this could work too. I would usually split the core of a cable into two equal parts, like so. And then you connect it like this. Take one end of the pair, twist it together. Take the second part of the core, twist it together. And then twist the two together. Or even a simpler way, just take the two ends and twist them together. This is how I usually do it. I know there is like maybe 10 other ways to uh, twist the cables together, but this works for me. Then I would usually put it like so and get some electrical tape around this bad boy. Nice and tight. And what I don't like doing with electrical tape is just ripping it off like this. It stretches it and it's like, it works, but it's not nice. I actually prefer to use a knife to cut it off. And then you have a connection like this it looks like shit it's not very strong you can pull it apart quite easily what you can do to make it a little more stronger fold it down like this like so and put some more electrical tape over it this way it wouldn't be so easy to rip it apart like so this method works we've all been doing it for many many years and it's been working fine but there are some quicker and better options. So what I have here is my little box with all my favorite connectors. So first of all, let's look uh, at the wire nuts. Little guys like this, all different sizes, just depending on the size of the wire. And wire nut is quite fun. You just take two ends of the cable. You don't even have to twist them. Just put the wire nut on top of it and twist the wire nut like I don't know, three, four times, you will feel when it's like fully twisted and you have a quick and quite a secure connection like this. You do the same for the second end of the cable. Couple twists and you have a nice little uh, and quite secure connection like this. Let's see how strong it is. Well, definitely not the strongest option either. So let's look at the better option, which what I think 
would be the Vago connectors. These are really cool. I probably prefer these ones over any other type of connections because it's so quick and secure. Yes, these connectors, they cost a little bit, but if you work with low voltage, you can probably just order a bunch of them from uh, China and they will be a lot cheaper from there and they would probably work the same as the German ones. Um, so the way they work, there are two levers on it. You pull them up and then you stick one end of the cable in it, pull the lever down, stick the second end of the cable in this one, pull the lever down. That's it. Let's do the second end. They are made from crystal clear plastic, so you can see your cables inside and you can sleep well at night because you know that your cables are connected well. And let's see how strong is this connection. And this one is much stronger than the wire nuts. Don't get me wrong, I was pulling too hard for these types of connectors. They are not meant uh, for stresses like this. And if you want an even stronger and the most secure connection, in my opinion, it would be just soldering two ends of the cables. Let's look at your regular soldering setup. Well, you probably don't need a setup like I have here. You just need your soldering gun. This is my favorite soldering gun. This one is TS80. It works from the USB power bank. It's got plenty of power. It's quite tiny. You can set your temperature to whatever you want. I remember my first soldering iron. It was a big gun like this and it would get crazy hot. The handle would be like so hot after like half an hour that I was even able to touch it. It was probably like this big of a machine with a tip probably or a thickness of a finger. And yeah, that's what I've used to learn how to solder. But now I have this tiny little uh, guy and it works so much better than the big old gun that I've had before. So what I would like to do is to twist the core of the cable so it looks something like this without any annoying little copper strips sticking out. Then you take what's called a soldering wire. This one have a flux in it so you don't have to have a separate uh, flux to use this one. And what I like to do is to put some solder on each cable first. Make sure you breathe in all the chemical fumes that's rising up. Then you take your shrink tube Put them on the cable before you solder the second end of the cable and solder two ends of the cable together so it looks beautiful and sexy like this. Make sure there are no sharp ends sticking out. If there are, just clean them up with your nippers, solder the second end. Make sure your solder looks nice and crisp. Put your shrink tube on top. I have this little fella and I'm gonna take it and apply some heat on the shrink tube and it's going to shrink nice and quick. Yes, perfect. And this is probably the nicest connection you can get. Let's give it a little pull test. Oh, that was hard and <laughs> you can see that I've ripped apart the cable but the place where I've soldered it stayed in place. So yeah, this is very secure. But there is other way to solder your cable and with this other way you don't even need to have a soldering iron, you don't need to have any shrink tubes. All you need is a connector like um, this. They cost almost nothing if you get them from China. There are different sizes of these connectors. And what's cool about this one, that it's got a solder and then there is a little portion of glue inside of each connector. So the connection that you make is uh, watertight. Well, or at least that's what they promise us. So with this one, you put it on the cable like so and then you stick your second end of the cable inside like so. Then you take your little torch or even better if you have a heat gun. Make sure you're not too close with a torch and you slowly and gently start heating it up until the middle part 
starts to melt. There we go. Some more heat. It takes a second to cool down. You can see inside that it's fully soldered. So nice. Such a quick and nice way to connect the cables. But to be honest, I still prefer the classic soldering method, our signature pull test. Let's give it one more shot, don't we? Okay, I gave it some more bins with a heat gun. I'm quite disappointed actually, I thought it's going to be a lot stronger. Okay, it looks like it's fully cured. Let's give it another signature pull test. So I actually ripped apart the cable this time. So, so I'm definitely giving this one a pass, but still my favorite option is the classic soldering. But to be honest, this one is a lot more convenient. So I advise you to get some of these connection uh, in your toolbox. So there's another cool connector that I wanted to show you. These are the 3M little Jello connectors. And this one is for the internet cable. So let's imagine you've broke your mom's internet cable and now you have to call a guy from a service to come and fix it. But wait, there is a way to do it for you by yourself. You take your two ends like so and you put both ends inside this little connector. Make sure it's all the way inside. Then you grab your pliers and squeeze this little guy inside. And what happens inside is that there is a little almost like a blade that penetrates the insulation of both ends and bridges them together so you have nice little connection like this. It works super nice. Let's give it our signature pull test. Fuck me, that's strong. Yes, that's really strong. So I hope you've learned something today if you did don't forget to leave a like under this video. Don't forget to write some comments. Maybe tell me about some other connectors that I've missed out. And for rookie makers, don't forget, you can fool around with your low voltage systems. But if you are dealing with your 220 or 110 voltage, if you're over DC and you're not quite sure what you're doing, better call a professional. I don't want you to get killed or cause a fire. Thank you for sticking around. I felt kind of rusty recording this video after a long break. Uh, but I did it. Yes. See you. Bye.